Oh boy, the stack is falling. Hello guys. Today I wanted to make a little video recommending some short books. I have found that I have really been gravitating towards shorter books lately. I used to be such a series reader and that has really changed uh, in the past um, couple of years. I think short books are great because they do not waste time. They get straight to the point and they're not here to fluff around or any of that. So. I'm going to recommend a few to you. I tried to pick some across genres uh, just because I know people think short books, they think contemporaries and stuff. So I tried to steer away from contemporaries. Um, most of these books are around the 300 page mark or under. I think that is pretty short. Obviously, certain genres are going to be different lengths, just byproduct of their design. You're going to be hard pressed to find a high fantasy that's under 300 pages, but I tried my best to assemble a nice little selection for you guys. First book series that I'm going to recommend to you guys is one that you've probably all heard of already, but that is the Wayward Children series by Sean and Maguire. This is a series of fantasy novellas. They're all pretty short, around the 200 page mark. Um, and they are set in this world where these doors open to certain kids that lead to these magical places where they have all of these adventures and find their true home. However, some of the children wind up back in the real world and they have trouble adjusting. So they get sent to this place called Eleanor, where it's home for wayward children, uh, to try and cope with being back in the real world when a lot of them want to return to this fantasy world that they came from. Uh, this first book is kind of following this girl Nancy as she goes to this school, um, but the whole series is really good. I've read the first four books, um, currently on the fifth one right now, and they all kind of either follow the present timeline or sometimes show the backstories of certain characters in their respective fantasy worlds. And they're really good. Sean and Maguire manages to write such like a dreamy atmosphere in such a short amount of time. And for me, that is the strong point of these books. Next book I'm going to recommend is The Refrigerator Monologues by Catherine M. Valente. I read this years ago and it has been one of my favorites ever since. This is a collection of six stories. And it is following these six different women who were either superheroes, the girlfriends or wives of superheroes, and they have all wound up dead in some way. Uh, and they're all talking about their experiences together. The title comes from a trope uh, in superhero comics called Women in Refrigerators. This is basically when a female character is brutalized or killed off, not for her own story, but for the sake of a male character's development. The term comes from this one issue of Green Lantern, where Green Lantern's girlfriend, Alexandra DeWitt, is murdered by one of the supervillains and her body is dismembered and stuffed into a refrigerator all to try and get at Green Lantern. These are all like fictional characters, but they're very clearly based off of uh, characters in comics. There is a story that is about a Gwen Stacy character, um, a Jean Grey, a Harley Quinn, Karen Page, Queen Mira, and the titular kind of character, uh, Alexandra DeWitt. Um, it's really great. I don't think you need to have like a super big knowledge on comic books in order to read this and appreciate it. It's just really good. Catherine M. Valente's writing is so evocative and strong and it's just fucking amazing. Next I'm going to recommend Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. This is just a really nice fun story about an orc named Viv who gives up her life as a mercenary to open up a coffee shop in a small town. It's just pleasant. It's about her and just the people who she meets to help her build up this cafe and she runs into some trouble but for the most part, this is just a very wholesome story about love and friendship and community. 
and I think you should all read it. Next, I have Summer of Salt by Katrina Leno. Now, this is technically a fantasy, but it really reads like a contemporary. Uh, it is about this girl named Georgina, and she is from this family of women who all have magical powers of some sort. She lives on this really small island town with her twin sister and her mum, and they run this inn together, and every year this bird, which is the only one like it in the whole world, comes to this island and all of these bird watchers from all around the world come to see this bird. Uh, but this year some shit goes down and Georgina has to deal with it. This is a really nice story. It's at times very pleasant and whimsical and at other times very dark and emotional. Definitely some trigger warnings for discussions about sexual assault in here. Um, but yeah, Georgina is a lesbian and she does have a romance with this girl who comes to the island with her brother named Prue. And another big focus of the story is her relationship with her twin sister Mary. That is a really strong component and kind of the driving force of the whole story. So if you like seaside, small towns, witchy vibes, all kind of deeper topics, then I think you'll enjoy this. Next, I have Pet by Akweke Amezi. This is a dystopia, utopian, fantasy kind of book. It is set in like this post-revolutionary world where all corruption from like the government level and down has been eradicated by these people that they refer to as angels. Uh, the main character is this young trans girl named Jam who accidentally brings to life one of her mother's paintings and this creature which is named Pet is on a mission to find a monster which are supposed to be non-existent in this new world. It mostly focuses on how monsters and angels like good people and bad people don't look like one thing and that in order to actually make a good society it isn't done in like one fell swoop you have to constantly be working you know and it's just really good next i'm gonna recommend a personal all-time favorite of mine and that is rosemary's baby by ira levin this is a classic horror story that changed the world as we know it. <laughs> this is about a young woman named Rosemary uh, and her husband Guy as they move into this old apartment building in New York City. Um, all of the residents at this place are much older than them and are really weird. <laughs> Rosemary's main goal is to try and have a baby, but when she suddenly becomes pregnant, a lot of weird stuff starts going on. The neighbours are very invested in her pregnancy. Her husband is acting really suspicious. Strange, horrific things start going on around them. The paranoia, the dread, it's all built up so well. People who don't know what the story is about, I won't, I guess, give it away, but even if you do, even if you've seen like the movie with Mia Farrow and you know the story, the book is still worth reading, in my opinion. Ira Levin in general just writes really good, short, creepy books. His other book that I've read, The Stepford Wives, was also really great. And he just does domestic horror so well. Read this book. Next, I'm going to recommend just all of the Hercule Poirot books, but we'll use Murder on the Orient Express as a stand-in. This series is one that I've kind of steadily been going through for the last year or so. All of the books are around 300 pages. Some are a bit longer, but most are a bit shorter. And they're just really great. They're these short, snappy, fun, whodunit mysteries. And I think a lot of people might be hesitant to pick these books up because they're quite old. Most of them were published in like the early 20th century, but they're very readable. You don't need to be a big classics reader in order to enjoy Agatha Christie in my humble opinion. Uh, Hercule Poirot, the protagonist, I love him. Agatha did not, but that's okay. We don't have to talk about it. 
I personally think that murder mysteries are just super quick and easy to fly through because you want to get to the end as quickly as you can to figure out who the murderer is. So if you want a good murder mystery book, consider Agatha Christie, specifically the Hercule Poirot books. Next book I'm going to talk about is The Monster of Ellenhaven by Jennifer Giesbrecht. This is a dark fantasy novella. Uh, it is about this guy named Johan who cannot die. He's indestructible. No matter how many times he tries to uh, destroy himself in creative ways, he just heals right back up. So he kind of just wanders around this uh, kind of 18th century type German city, uh, killing people at random, just like kind of a, a joker kind of guy, basically. Just reveling in the pain and destruction that he causes. Until one day he stumbles across this man named Florian, who he discovers is a sorcerer. And so Florian, who on the outside looks like a beautiful cherub, is actually a bit messed up. He is concocting this plan to get revenge on the town for a situation that happened with his family when he was a child. So the two of them kind of team up to come to this agreement uh, that Johan will help him on his quest and in return Florian will try, I guess, uh, and find Johan's origins. Um, the two of them have an interesting relationship. It does have some romantic, steamy qualities to it, but it's not a good relationship. This is definitely one of those I can make him worse kind of situation and it's great. This will not be for everyone. I completely recognize that, but it hits so many niche points for me personally, and it's only 160 pages that I can't not include it on this list. Again, pick this up at your own discretion. If you're into this kind of dynamic of just two messed up people messing each other up a little bit more, then you'll enjoy it. But if that's not something you're into, if you don't like that kind of weird uh, blurred line in a relationship, then maybe this isn't for you. Next book is The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. This is super short. I listened to the audiobook. It's only like five hours long. It's about this young boy returning to the small town where he grew up and then he starts having all of these memories from his childhood that he had forgotten. The kind of catalyst of the story is that this woman moves in with his family as like a nanny or something but she's like a demon or some kind of thing. It's been a while since I've read it, so the details are a little fuzzy, but I definitely remember the demon nanny. Uh, there's also this house uh, kind of at the end of the street where these three women all live, and they seem to be witches of some sort. There's a bucket that has an ocean inside of it. It kind of has Neil Gaiman's personal kind of surreal fantasy sort of touch. There's definitely horror elements in this as well. Demon Nanny, once again, but it's just very atmospheric, interesting. Like, I can't look away. I don't know how else to describe it. It's just very good. I'm also going to recommend A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness, uh, inspired from an idea by Siobhan Dowd. Now, Patrick Ness was very popular on BookTube back when I first started watching videos, probably like too long ago now. <laughs> um, and this book was very popular back in the old day. Um, this is about a young boy whose mother is dying of cancer. And so he's living with his aunt um, and just really struggling with everything that's going on until one night a monster shows up at his window saying that this young boy has called to him. And so he is here to help him out, basically. Um, and so it's about that, and it's very good. There's This edition has all of these like illustrations throughout. It's very kind of haunting in a way, and beautiful, and I just think that it is very good. Like, look at this shit. Oh, 
glare. Tell me you see this and you don't want to read it. You know what I mean? It's like very deep. It gets a little intense towards the end and you kind of realize what this journey has been about this whole time. It's kind of really about this young boy coming to terms with this really difficult emotions that he's dealing with, uh, with his dying mother. And it's just very good. I know I keep saying that at the end of all of these things, but it's true. All of these books are really good. And then the last book I'm going to recommend is A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson. This is a kind of retelling or reimagining of Dracula told from the perspective of one of his wives, Constanta. Uh, Constanta at the beginning of the book is this peasant girl who is dying and is saved by Dracula and turned into a vampire. Uh, and it kind of follows her as the years go by she is alive and with Dracula for centuries and along the way he kind of collects more uh lovers it's about Constanta kind of realizing and coming to terms with the fact that Dracula is bad that he is abusive and a bit of a monster and not the person who she fell in love with necessarily uh it is also about Constanta Magdalena and Alexei, who are the other spouses, I guess, of Dracula, all kind of coming together in the face of this opposition from this abusive lover. Uh, it's polyamorous, and all the characters are basically bi in some way, and it's just really good. I think the narration is the strongest part of the book. You really get inside Constanta's mind and you see like how devoted and in love with Dracula that she is and how there are just these moments that slowly start to build up more and more over time until it reaches this breaking point. And I think that it does a good job dealing with talking about like partner violence and stuff like that. Obviously, they're all vampires, so it's a bit extreme, but it still hits the head of the issue, and it's just beautiful. So yeah, those are my recommendations to you. Hopefully you can pick some of these books up and they can get you out of a reading slump, just kind of reinvigorate you. Sometimes it's just really nice to finish a book quickly. You know, you feel accomplished. I read a book today. You know what I mean? Uh, if you have any other recommendations for other short books that you like or know of, feel free to throw them my way. I'm always looking for more. Um, and yeah, that is it for today. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.